Hey, today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a case study on a feature film I recently graded. We're gonna talk about some of the intentions we initially had uh, before we started grading and how those intentions carried themselves out throughout the feature film. So let me give you some background. Uh, back when we were first starting to work on this film, we talked about how uh, we wanted color to kind of move with the film. So that means in certain scenes, depending on how the characters are feeling, we wanted to either dial up or dial back certain elements to help with the story. And so we started talking about, well, what could some of those different things be? And we ended up coming up with a number of story dials, as we called them. So it was uh, the story dials we had were contrast, saturation, image balance, and then a certain highlight hue, which I'll, I'll show you later. The reason why we use the term uh, kind of like color dials or story dials is these weren't meant to be light switches. It wasn't meant to be you know on or off, but rather we'd fade these effects in or out depending on the, the mood and feel of the scene. One of the things that helped was the cinematographer Dan Parsons uh, actually put together this document which helped kind of have a, a guiding overview for where we wanted things to go. One of the things that Dan did in the document was he started to set the tone for what he called modulation of the color. And that is, we don't want things to feel like every scene is a separate film. We want to have kind of this baseline to work off of. But as the story moves along, be able to make little adjustments here and there to emphasize those story beats. An example would be, uh, one of the things we wanted to emphasize in the film was the revelation of truth. So when a character finds out something, we, we wanted to be able to, to lean into that from a color and cinematography perspective. Another is this idea of jail. So the main character's name is Jason and he jail is a physical location that he spends some time in in the film, but also there's this like emotional prison. He has his past that really hangs over him. So we wanted to be able to take some color elements and uh, use that to indicate when he's feeling the burden of his past. Broadly speaking, when it came to the look of the film, uh, when we're thinking about contrast, the thought was a good highlights, a good highlight roll off, a good shadow roll off. Um, more often than not, we were going to lean towards more contrast than less. Well, that, that wasn't always true. And then at the very end of the, at the very bottom of the contrast, we wanted a teeny tiny little scoop of the black levels. Not much. It's just, if you watch the film, you probably won't even notice that we scooped it, but we didn't want things to clip. And there's a couple dark scenes in the film that if we just scooch that black point just up a little bit, it helps us see more, I would say, perceived detail. It doesn't add any detail to the footage that wasn't there, but it kind of tricks our eyes into thinking that there might be a little more in that darkness. As far as broad hues go, uh, we talked about, you know, hues in the sky. We didn't want to lean magenta. You know, we wanted to, to pull them away from magenta. And that's largely true of the, uh, the blues throughout the film. So that was one of those across the film things we wanted to be true. Another was we, we do see the green of nature coming up quite a bit. And when it comes to the green of nature, we would prefer a slight bias towards the warm tones in greens of, you know, like grass and trees rather than cool tones. So that was one of those considerations as well. And then to wrap it up, we wanted to pursue a 35 millimeter grain along with some very light halation. So let's take a look at how we accomplished some of this inside DaVinci Resolve. So let's start with this shot here. It's kind of on this hillside where uh, two of our, our main characters are talking to each other. Now, what, what's interesting about this shot is it's a good way to showcase kind of the base level of color for this film. So when I, when I was initially uh, just doing some testing, I, I tend to work in the, uh, the timeline level and then just kind of, you know, put some very basic color management in place. So uh, right now I have color management in the uh, pre-group clip, but uh, any of these disabled nodes were kind of uh, for the experimental testing time. So, you know, this gray, I could check, you know, what's it doing to middle gray throughout the process. Uh, and I was experimenting with some uh, adjustments of that middle gray point. Now, here's what we landed on as far as the elements that are going to touch every single clip in this film. We landed on a, uh, a very uh, light-handed 2383 uh, look. And uh, I'm actually using a LUT here, but the LUT is actually something that uh, it's a combination of both some previous work that people had done as well as some, some power grades that I had mixed together. Uh, for ease of uh, playback, I ended up just baking it all into a single LUT just to throw into here. But the thing to know about it is it's, it's pretty light-handed. A lot of those elements that we were looking for as far as the global look, things like uh, trying to not have blue bias towards magenta and trying to make sure that the greens of nature lean a little more golden. Those are the elements that were included in this LUT. And you can see how the sky is not leaning magenta, although the, the sky really didn't have any magenta uh, to begin with in this scene. The uh, the greens, the, the highlights of the greens are especially leaning a little more towards uh, the, the warmer tones. The shadows in general are getting a little bit of cooling. I'll, I'll show you here, if I jump over to just kind of a, uh, a gray ramp, you'll see the, uh, the overall kind of split lit toning happening of just our global look. So a slight bit of warming in the highlights and a little bit of cooling in the shadows there. 
From there, we had this little bit of a shadow lift, and it's not a lot going on, but it's just that little bit to score, sort of uh, scooch up the uh, the bottom end of the image and make sure we're not clipping any detail. Then we have some uh, grain and very minor halation happening, and then uh, kind of the Da Vinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709 color space transform on the end of the image. Uh, just to show you uh, kind of what that halation is doing, uh, if, if we were to zoom in really close to the edge of this tractor here, right on this, uh, this kind of like silver spot, let me disable the halation, and now let me enable it. Do you see how when we disable it, it's a little more clean around the edges, whereas I enable it, we're getting this little more of kind of a, a glow. It's incredibly small and minor, but I think it's a great little example of what the halation can do. Uh, as well as if you look up here kind of on the edge line of the trees, if I pull the halation and grain out, it looks like that, pretty clean. I add it back in, we get this slight edge of uh, this kind of warm halation edge, which I think is beautiful. So that's a good look at the foundation that the film was built upon. Now I'm gonna move from the timeline level to the group post clip level. And this is where we kind of uh, did most of our scene wide adjustments. So uh, the adjustments we did scene wide were actually really subtle. The first thing was a very small exposure adjustment to, to bring us to the place we were looking for, as well as we slightly backed off the contrast. Uh, the, the balance was great. Uh, we, we faded in a little bit of mid-tone detail, and mid-tone detail was one of those other story dials that uh, kind of throughout the process we were tweaking of, does this scene need to feel, you know, a little harder? Uh, we could, you know, dial that mid-tone detail up or a little softer and we could dial it back. From there, the only thing left was a very, very slight bit of desaturation with this uh, right here. Uh, it's, it's really hard to notice it if I toggle it on and off. Um, it was really subtle. So let's now jump over to uh, the beginning of the film and look at what happens when we start to turn some of these story dials, as it were, up. So this is a good example of uh, where we can see a couple of these story dials in action. So uh, keep in mind that the, uh, the timeline level uh, nodes, I haven't adjusted at all. But on a scene-wide level, uh, let me back these out and show you what's happening. So overall, we did a slight exposure uh, up for the scene and we kept the contrast where it was at. Uh, we, we like the level of contrast. Uh, overall image balance was in the right place, but we did a nice little bit of upping the mid-tone detail to give a little more uh, clarity and edge to some of the uh, elements in the image. And I'm gonna skip over this node right here and jump to this. So uh, Hue Shift is a, uh, a plugin that I've been uh, playing around with from Pixel Tools. The, it's, it's a very similar tool to what uh, kind of curves do uh, over here in the, the Hue Verses, um, but uh, I've, been, I've been liking experimenting with it. Uh, what I did was I pulled out uh, saturation in this node, but tried to leave a little more of the blues in place. So that's kind of what's happening in this node. Uh, but you'll see uh, I've only faded it in about 50%, so we're, we're not using all of its effect. So uh, I'll pull this out for a second. Here's what it was before. We pull out some of the saturation. I wanted some additional saturation pulled out, but in an even way, not biasing it towards a certain color. So I pulled out a touch more saturation with this node. And then right here at the end, we used, uh, if you look in the highlights here, we introduced some of this kind of yellowish green tone into the highlights. So let me back it out and add it. This was that color we talked uh, in the beginning about that idea of adding that color of that you know prison or emotional prison. We started fading this color into the highlights when we wanted to lean into that. Uh, so I've only got about 50% of it um, in at this moment in time, but that kind of shows you what it does. You might be able to see this effect even better in the wide shot. So let me pull off the, uh, the highlight adjustment. So it's a very clean white, uh, almost a clinical white in there. And let me bring back in some of that, that yellowish green highlight and you got it. This was largely inspired because uh, certain daylight film stocks tend to have this reaction in the highlights. So we thought, what if we use this as a storytelling element and we can fade it in and out based on where it works. You can also see how this plays out in this prison scene. So let me take off the, uh, the, the scene-wide adjustments. So basically what we have is we have the, uh, you're now looking at kind of the, the camera log image. Uh, this is with that baseline, this, those timeline adjustments we talked about earlier uh, being in place. And then on the scene level, uh, we thought things needed to be a little bit brighter so we could see some detail in the face as well as pulling back the contrast a bit further, uh, just not making sure the image doesn't pop. Uh, overall, the scene balance, uh, we were feeling like we were getting a little too much green in the image, so we uh, just balanced out the green slightly, uh, fading in a, a good chunk of that mid-tone detail. Uh, you, you'll especially see that in his hair right there. And then we have this desaturation. And that desaturation, once again, is letting a few more of the blues through, and that's at about 70%. And then we bring in this, uh, this kind of prison highlight color. Uh, you'll notice that especially in his hair right here. So this is off and on. If you look at his arm here, we see it off, and now it's on. And that's how we were kind of building this scene-wide look. Let me pull that all out, 
and all on. That's giving us the look for this scene. And keep in mind, all of that is happening underneath some of these timeline nodes. And those timeline nodes are really starting to help us get a consistent foundation for us to build upon. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel every scene. We've set kind of a, a nice, gentle baseline for us to work off of. And then we can use those story dials on a scene by scene basis. We do get a number of scenes with flashbacks in this film, and one of the ideas we experimented with was, would it be possible for us to make the flashbacks oversaturated so that they can see that, you know, this was the character's past and it's very present in their minds due to that oversaturation, so that when we jump to the present, it shows that the characters are maybe like living in the past. You know, the present is not as vibrant as it should be. We ended up experimenting with that and realized it didn't really work. You know, visually it didn't make sense. So we ended up going a, a more desaturated route for the flashbacks. Um, one of the things that we, we will notice is, let me jump to a future shot here. We wanted it to be almost black and white, but we wanted to allow the police lights to shine through. So it's not quite black and white. It has a little bit of a, a warm highlight to it, but then the halation, kind of that red glow and bloom that's happening is much more noticeable and still maintains its red saturation. So that is happening after the desaturation. It's a cool effect that I think served the story well here. This is a scene where the, uh, the main character, Jason, goes through a bit of a, uh, a detox. And this also shows you how some of the story dials can be used. So let me, uh, let me pull off any adjustments we made to this scene. So right here, you're looking at an image that is just with our uh, kind of like gentle-handed global adjustments going on at the timeline level. And if you look at this, it feels like a very nice and pleasant morning, but we don't want it to look and feel that way. So what did we do? Well, we first looked at overall exposure. We dropped the exposure a bit and pulled a little more contrast out of it so it wasn't feeling too full of life. We, uh, we really cranked some good mid-tail mid detail in there. And uh, here, let me toggle it on and off. You can see how we're starting to really find the, the edges and texture of the skin, especially. Uh, from there, we used uh, that, that saturation pullout, uh, that, that hue shift. And this is, we used 100% of it in this scene. And then we added that little bit of the, uh, the, the prison highlights into the mix. And so that's how we go from something really bright, colorful, and lively, like a warm morning, to something very gritty and visceral. This scene is a pretty good example of what happens when we turn those story dials up to like 10. We also had this scene a little later in the film with these very blue walls. And let me, let me pull off um, uh, any of our adjustments here just to show you how bright those walls were. Don't those walls just kind of like slap you in the face when you look at them? So we, we knew that we didn't want the walls that potent coming through and we still wanted to maintain some of that gritty, more desaturated uh, look of the film. Uh, so the way that we did that uh, on this is we uh, overall uh, dropped the exposure slightly, pulled out a bit of contrast. The scene balance was feeling a little warm so we tried to neutralize some of those elements. You can especially see that uh, in his shirt there. We cranked in the mid-tone detail. Uh, and then we applied some of that overall desaturation. We only used about 30% of that uh, saturation dial that we were talking about. But once again, uh, this desaturation lets through blues more than other colors. We applied a very light bit of that emotional prison highlight color. And then we took the walls and desaturated them as well as darkened them just a bit more. Uh, and so that is how we went from an image that feels very bright and happy to that more subdued, uh, oppressive feel. Another element I talked about is how do we show the revelation of truth when it comes to the characters in this film? And there was a specific scene that we had some fun with. Uh, this scene, we have this uh, another one of the leads named Griff having this conversation with this lady about some things that had happened in their past. I, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil the story if you haven't seen it yet. But we, we start with a, a very standard approach to this scene, right? So uh, if I pull off the, the scene adjustments here, we have overall uh, mostly a contrast drop more than anything, a little bit of mid-tone detail in there, as well as some uh, light desaturation. But what happens is as the scene goes on, uh, this lady gives Griff some information that he didn't know about, and it actually changes his perspective. And what we did is we faded in a little more saturation very, very slowly over the course of the scene. So that if we go to the, uh, if we go to the end of the revelation, we have Griff looking like this. So this is kind of the, this is the end saturation point. Let me click between those two. And now let me jump to the beginning of the scene to show you for comparison. He looks like this. Do you see that jump? We're going from less saturation to more saturation over the course of that scene. It almost ends up feeling like the, uh, the sun is coming out. Let me show you that from her perspective. So this is her at the end of the scene, and this is her at the beginning. 
It's not much, it's subtle, but it does a really nice job. A similar effect was used at the end of 1917 where the soldier kind of walks by the tree, sits down. We get this boost of saturation and warmth in that film. Uh, here we, we mostly just did saturation because the scene already lent itself to a nice warm look. The last thing I'll mention here is uh, towards the end of the film, uh, one of the last kind of big finale scenes, we really wanted it to feel like the, the world was just kind of burning down for Jason here. And uh, you'll see how incredibly warm some of these clips are. And that warm push is actually something that we uh, theorized in post-production here. If I pull off the adjustments for this scene, you'll notice that it's actually a pretty neutral looking beginning. Now, once again, we do have those timeline level adjustments on. But uh, here's kind of what we did. We uh, overall pulled back a little bit of the contrast to give us a bit more detail. We gave some of the blues a touch more saturation, uh, cranked up that mid-tone detail, and then we had what we kind of called the fire push. And these, th there's kind of two steps that happen here. We have the fire push, which goes a lot, but then immediately after that, we have desaturation. So let me kind of move those two together. We have the uh, saturation push and then desaturation after it, right there. Those kind of were enabled at the same time. And then a very light bit of that highlight yellowness coming in. If I just pull it off and on, it feels very jarring. But what's interesting is as you watch the film, we're fading this effect in on a kind of a scene by scene basis. So it really isn't nearly as jarring as it might seem. This also helps contrast the, uh, the final scene of the film. And the, the final scene is much more towards that neutral look that we uh, had been talking about, kind of like that hillside bit. Above and beyond the timeline adjustments, basically this is made up of uh, a slight uh, adjustment for contrast and exposure, an incredibly minor balance adjustment, and then the tiniest touch of desaturation and literally like 10% of that highlight adjustment, just the mm, smallest amount of that, uh, that kind of like a yellow green highlight coming in, as well as some additional mid-tone detail. It allows us to create a really nice uh, difference between the climax of the film and then the aftermath. So there you go. There is a behind the scenes look at this little case study at this feature film called uh, Searching for the Elephant. What questions do you have at this point? Uh, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this, uh, let me know. Hit that like button or subscribe if you want to stay up to date with some of the future content that's being produced. All right, I'll see you in the next one.